Hello, I'm Pastor Gary. Welcome to Timely Teaching. I'm hearing the word crisis all the time of late, and you probably have been hearing it too. So I like definitions, so I looked up the definition of crisis, a time of intense difficulty, trouble, or danger. I would have to admit, we're in the middle of all three. Intense difficulty, enormous difficulty, some more than others. Some are out of work, some have the virus, trouble, Danger, we have an enemy that we cannot see. It was Rahm Emanuel that said, and I'm not sure if he said it first, but Google came up first with it. He said, you never let a serious crisis go to waste. We are in the middle of a serious crisis. And a friend of mine in crisis, talking, uh, taking the time to do some needed repairs to his house. He told me he's also take, spending a lot of time getting closer to Jesus and prayer, and reading the Word of God. That's an awesome idea, getting closer to Jesus. You know, people have asked me a question. <clears throat> What's the Lord speaking to you today? You know, I don't hear a loud voice, but I am sensing several things. I sense Jesus whispering, trust me. Several years ago, and at my age, that could be one year to 12 years, so we're gonna take 12 years ago, my wife and I were going through some serious problems, not with each other, but with a church that we were pastoring. It was during that time that I was praying late one night. That still small voice said clear, clearly whispering in my ear, do you still trust me? So that doesn't happen all the time, but it has happened in a few times since then. And I sense him wanting me to ask you, do you trust him? I firmly believe that I can rely on Jesus' ability to keep me. He's the one to be trusted. In Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6 in the Amplified Bible, it says, Trust in and rely confidently on the Lord with all your heart, and do not rely on your own insight or understanding. In all your ways, know and acknowledge and recognize him, and he will take, make your paths straight and smooth, removing obstacles that block the way. So today we have some choices to make in this crisis. We can sit in the corner and be fearful. We can continually ask God why, and truly there are a lot of whys, or we can trust God. I hear another whisper in that still small voice. God is speaking and saying, I've got this. There's one thing I do know, and that is God has us in the palm of his hand. This pandemic, I don't like. I don't understand it. And do you have cares and fears and questions? I have an answer for you tonight. It's found in the book God wrote just for you. In 1 Peter 5, 7, in that same Amplified Bible, it says, casting all your cares, all your anxieties, all your worries, all your concerns once and for all on him. I want to ask you a question. What does all leave out? He said, all your worries, all your anxieties, all your concerns, once and for all, put them on him. He cares about you with deepest affection and watches over you very carefully. I'm asking the Lord during this time, what do you want me to learn during this season in my life? <clears throat> the one thing I can draw closer to him, that's one thing I want to do. In James 4, verse 8, <clears throat> it says that in the Passion Translation, it says, move your heart closer and closer to God, and he will come even closer to you. I like what Eugene Peterson in the message says. He says, say a quiet yes to God, and he'll be there in no time. There's something I've begun to realize, and perhaps you have as well. Maybe we've taken church for granted. I didn't realize how much I love the church, the fellowship, the worship, the word, the presence of God, the love of Christ I felt until it was gone. I miss it. I miss God's people. I can be on a virtual group and I can see your faces, but it's not the same. It's not that I don't like it. It's just not the same. A friend and I were planning to talk over some things, and he said, you want me to call you? And I said, no, I want to meet you on Google, Meet, Google Meets. I want to see your face. 
This afternoon, I was, uh, had to take a book back to a friend, so I said, well, meet me at McDonald's, and we'll get a cup of coffee, and you back in the space, and I'll pull in the space, and we'll talk for a little bit. And so that's what we did. We got coffee, he backed in, I pulled in, we talked for about 15 or 20 minutes. It was awesome. It was really awesome. I'm realizing perhaps what we've taken for granted hits home when it's taken away. I was thinking of a great preacher named T.F. Tinney. He made a statement at a conference I attended many years ago, and he said, you have to trust God when you can't track him. To me, he was saying, you have to trust God when you don't understand what he's doing and you don't know what he's doing. It may be your anxiety level has hit the roof. You feel you, he is as close, and I want to tell you, he is as close as the mention of his name. Say it with me right now, Jesus. Say it one more time. Say, Jesus. How about lifting your hands up and say, Jesus. You know, there's just something about that name. It makes a difference, doesn't it? Philippians 4, 6, and 7 in the Amplified says, Do not be anxious or worried about anything, but in everything, every circumstance and situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, continue to make your specific requests known to God. And the peace of God, that peace that which reassures the heart, that peace which transcends all understanding, that peace which stands guard over your hearts and your minds, in Christ Jesus is yours. Say that again. And the peace of God, that, that peace which reassures the heart, that peace which transcends our understanding, that peace which stands guard over our hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus is yours. Now claim it right now. See, I claim that peace right now in Jesus' name. This chapter in the Bible that I've probably been thinking about for a, for a couple of months when things are kind of upside down in my life, I go to this psalm. It's my 911 call. And it's Psalm 91 1. And it says this Those who abide, live in the shelter of the Most High, will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God, and I trust Him. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. Abide means to lodge, to stop over, to pass the night, to abide. A lodge is a place where one temporarily spends the night. When dark times come our way, we need to stop over. We need to spend the night. We need to run to and abide in the throne room of the Almighty. That speaks to me of prayer and worship and praise and studying the Word of God. We find rest in the shadow. Now, in order to be in the shadow of something, you have to get close to it. So the closer we get to the Lord, the closer He comes to us. We find rest in the shadow. We need to stay close to Him in this season that we're in. Psalm 46, 1 says, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler. The snare of the fowler, I looked at Matthew 13, 19, it says, when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches all that was sown in his heart. In Psalm 91, 9, it says, because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the most high your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. Notice that, because you have made the Lord who is my refuge your dwelling place. No plague is going to come near you. We need to claim that scripture as well in this season we're in. Refuge, dwelling place, is a Hebrew word meaning shelter from the rain or storm, from danger or falsehood, and derives the root from the verb chaka means to, ref to seek refuge, to flee for protection, to trust in God, or to con confide our, our hope in God. 
In this psalm, there is an interplay between the words indicating where the child of the Almighty must abide during times of trouble. In this verse, 9, the person is permanently abiding or dwelling in the Almighty on that, in that spiritual place of refuge, while in verse 2, he's talk, taking refuge from evil temporarily in Almighty's place of lodging. When we combine these two concepts, taking refuge both temporary and permanently, and indicate that the person must be abiding continually in God's place of refuge. But he must also venture out into the stormy darkness to face the enemy from time to time. I challenge you, as long as we're in this pandemic, to read the Psalm 91, your 911 Psalm, every single day, maybe twice a day. Use it like a prescription that you've got to take twice a day and do that every day, and something will change in how you're feeling. There may be someone listening to this broadcast tonight, and perhaps you are like the person in Matthew 15, 8, where it says, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. To me, that means they have a head knowledge of God, but it hasn't yet reached their heart. Rahm Emanuel is not only one that doesn't let a crisis go to waste. Neither does Jesus Christ. There may be those that might put their blame on God for starting this pandemic. Let me assure you, he didn't start it, but he will certainly use it to bring one person out of darkness into his marvelous light. How about you today? Do you have a head knowledge of God? You know where there is a God? You really don't have a relationship with him. To have a relationship with him is easy. You just have to ask him into your heart and allow him to give you a heart that he can touch. Maybe there was a time you turned your life over to him, but life happened, and now you feel a million miles away from him. Maybe you're thinking, he won't take me back. Let me tell you, stop thinking that way. Jesus Christ loves you unconditionally. He loves you unconditionally. That means he can't do anything that would keep you. You can't do anything that would keep you from him forgiving you. No sin, he can't forgive. No heart, he can't mend. We just came through Easter, and during the time in the Bible, it talks about Peter denied that he even knew Jesus. After Jesus rose from the gra grave, he pulled Peter to the side and asked him, Peter, do you love me? Peter told him that he did, and with that, Peter didn't have to stay defined by his past mistakes. Like Peter, you and I have an opportunity to say yes to loving Jesus and being loved by him. No matter how messy your life looks or how far away you feel, there's nothing that can separate you from his love. Your past mistakes or current problems do not dictate your purpose when your life is rooted in Christ alone. The resurrection reassures us that no situation or mistake is impossible for God to redeem. There is no fear Jesus cannot conquer and no life he cannot heal. There is nothing that God cannot do. There are some lyrics uh, from a song entitled, I Miss My Time With You. If you ever get a chance, listen to it by Mickey Mangan. It goes like this. I'm just gonna read part of the, of the song. There he was just waiting in our old familiar place, an empty spot beside him where once I used to wait. To be filled with strength and wisdom for the battles of the day, I would have passed him by again if I didn't hear him say, I miss my time with you. Those moments together, I need to be with you each day and it hurts me when you say you're too busy busy trying to serve me, but how can you serve me when your spirit's empty? There's a longing in my heart, wanting more than just a part of you. It's true. I miss my time with you. How long has it been since you've made some time for Jesus in your life? In just a couple of minutes, I'm going to read a prayer. I want, to, I want you to read along or pray it along with me. Okay, it's the exact same prayer I prayed 45 years ago, and God changed my life. He fixed my marriage. He patched up my drinking problem and gave me a brand new life. It goes like this, and just right there where you're sitting, I don't care if anybody's around you, they don't matter. Just close them off and re repeat this after me. Lord Jesus, I need you. 
Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. I open the door of my heart and receive you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for forgiving my sins and for giving me eternal life. Take control of the throne of my life. Make me the kind of person you want me to be. Amen. I want to say a prayer for you, and if you just made that fresh start, Pastor Joe calls it a fresh start. If you just made that fresh start, rejoice. Jesus Christ came in. He forgave you of your sins. He wants you to walk with him. As soon as we get this building back open, you need to be here. Until then, let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you that you love each one of us unconditionally. You want us to look to you for everything we can and cast all our fears and anxieties on you because you care for us. Help us trust you in the times we are living in. Help each of us be safe and healthy in this hour. Be with those working on the front lines of this pandemic. We are thankful, Lord, you surround us with your love. Keep each one of us in the hollow of your hand. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.